Valentine of Folk Alliance International. You are. We celebrate you for arriving, for copying. Um, I am Michelle Concise, and I am at this moment presently the president of the board of Folk Alliance. Um, but it is my great honor to introduce to you our new executive committee elected yesterday. Our new president is Matt Smith. Our new vice president is Lisa Schwartz. Our new treasurer is Alka Sharma. Our new secretary is Dina McLeod. And our new at-large member is Matt the Electrician, Matt Sever. I'm super excited about this team. I felt very lucky to be present. I'd like to hand the meeting now over to Matt Smith. Thank you, Michelle. Quiet in the front. Security. Um, a couple of just, you know, formalities. I want to read to you all uh, the mission of the Folk Alliance, uh, if you didn't know it already. Uh, it is to nurture, engage, and empower the international folk music community, traditional and contemporary, amateur and professional, through education, advocacy, and performance. And uh, that, as our mission, runs as a thread through everything that we do here. Uh, we need your voices as we go through a difficult time these days. Uh, that there, there's a reason that you will find that in your bag. In your we are all here fighting for this uh, to make sure that this is a document uh, that we adhere to. And you are all part of that fight. You are all part of that struggle. And we appreciate what you're doing here. Uh, and, and, and this is an, uh, not just an important gathering, but now more than ever an essential gathering. So thank you, you folks all for being here. A few thank yous uh, we want to give here. Um, I'd like to thank the founders of the Folk Alliance International, uh, which started out in 1989, the first meeting. And uh, many of those folks still come to the, uh, to the conference, and we're thrilled that this legacy lives on here. Uh, I'd like to thank any of our board alumni. If any of our board alumni are here, if you would stand up for a moment so we can appreciate you. Um, the work we're doing continues on the work, uh, the foundation that you have all laid down, and we really are thrilled that you guys are here as well as, as everybody else. I want to get a big round of applause to the staff of the Folk Alliance International. Angus Finn and has built the most incredible team. Michelle and I got to witness them in action last night in a debrief meeting, their, their nightly debrief meeting, and it was, it was intense. I'm gonna say it was intense and inspiring to see a group of people uh, so in tune with each other uh, discussing how to make tomorrow better. Uh, so it's an incredible thing. I want to thank all of the, uh, the sponsors, the delegates, the donors, everyone that contributes to making this event what it is. Uh, you're all a part of this community and we're thrilled to have you all here. Uh, I'd like to uh, welcome our newest board members, uh, Chef Tukas, Tenny Buckner, Sam Lee, and Dom Flemens, and Lynn Segari. I would like to thank our uh, board members that have just left the board as of this morning. Dan Navarro, <laughs> Renee Bodie, and Gene Spivey. I want to thank our regional leaders, uh, Michael Kornfeld. You can applaud for all of them. <laughs> Bob Hoffbauer, Mark Hoffman, John Baker, and Dallas Allen. Um, We'd like to let you know, uh, you know, what we're doing. What is the work that those board members are doing all day in that room? Um, we we work together to help guide the organization, to help pro provide a little structure, and uh, we work. We do our work mostly in committees. Uh, the committees are uh, including, but not 
exclusive uh, are the executive committee, the personnel committee, the finance committee, fundraising, programming, nominating, governance, advocacy, and regions. And there's a lot, there's a lot that goes on here throughout the year. I hope you got a chance to uh, read through the program book and uh, read through the annual report, which is up on the website as well. You're gonna get a lot of information on what goes on with the Folk Alliance International, not just at the conference, but the work that happens year round. Uh, there have been you know, a, lot of, a lot of issues over the past several years uh, you know, re regarding performance rights, uh, various uh, advocacy, advocacy issues with uh, copyright. Um, there was recently an, uh, an issue this past year on, on where you're allowed to pee. Uh, and and a, a, a letter came out through the Folk Alliance International and we made sure that people were able to pee where they wanted to pee and where they needed to pee because that is not an issue uh, that should come up because of this thing right here. Uh, th th <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna keep going back to this. And one of the things that we heard from you all uh, in looking at the organization and looking at who we are serving is uh, looking at diversity. And we have worked very very hard. We had a great meeting in Tulsa back in the spring, uh, and that was our major topic. And we are looking to make sure that the constituency of the Folk Alliance of the board uh, and, and who comes look like the world that we live in. So we appreciate you folks all being here. We appreciate the diversity that this community is bringing together and, uh, and, and how you guys are helping form the decisions toward, towards making, making this something that is welcome to everyone. So thanks to you all for being here. I want to uh, get a quick round of applause here to actually all of our board of directors. That's Sam Lee down the end. I'll, I'll just, their names are all in the book. I'm just going to go first names because it'll take way less time. So let's say that's Ellen, Joan, Erica, Ralph, Lou, Tim, Alka, Mary Sue, Dom, Matt, Michelle, Dina, Lisa, Donald, uh, <laughs> Michael, Amy, and Lynn. Uh, We're, th we're thrilled that you're here, and, and I want to bring up uh, the man in charge of it all, the man who uh, makes this conference happen, and makes it not just happen, but happen incredibly well, Angus Finnan. Yeah. I don't know whose glasses these are, but um, they seem to work, so... Um, I just want to pick up on the comment that um, Matt said about our production meeting last night, a group of people in tune with each other working to make tomorrow better. Um, but really, apparently these don't work beyond <laughs> looking at this um, But that's really what this entire gathering community and organization is. Uh, people in tune with each other working to make tomorrow better. So it's, uh, it's my honor and pleasure to serve as your executive director and to um, to lead such an incredible team and to work with such an amazing group of uh, volunteer directors from not only across North America, but now for the first time with a, our first non-North American uh, director on the board of directors, Sam Lee. So it's um, my pleasure to be here. Uh, I do want to thank, uh, Matt also pointed out, and I was going to start by reading We the People of the United States and go on, but um, the point is, for those who weren't aware, when he was holding up, this is a pocket constitution. It's in each one of your tote bags. Um, carry them with you. Friday during the um, national strike, at, uh, in, towards the end of the day, we're going to have a gathering outside um, on the main deck for a group photo en masse with your pocket constitution, so keep them handy. Um, I do want to thank uh, Lynn Margulies, uh, Sam Hudson, Troy Campbell, Charlie Hunter, uh, Bill Maruka, Rod Pico, David Cantwell, the Kansas City Coalition Against Censorship, Glenn Last, Hannah Lindroth, and the fine people at ACLU for um, supporting us and providing those notifications. And I would like to uh, send a special thank you to, um, and mention to the Tulsa Office of Film, Music, Art, and Culture for their support of the uh, coffee and breakfast with the board and the AGM this morning. Um, 
We're going to start by taking um, a moment just to, to recognize the, the shoulders on, um, on which we stand, those of our dear uh, friend and our past executive director, Louis J. Myers. Um, he was uh, an inspiration, a force of nature, and came into the organization at a, at a critical time and really brought us to a place where there was the, the um, fiscal stability and the, the breadth of interest in, in the event at an industry level and at a community level that allow everything that we are now able to do to happen. Uh, so anything exciting and, and uh, new that's happening uh, isn't because I arrived or we built a team, it's because he set up a found, the, the foundation and the structure for us to, uh, to build onto. And um, he's, he's sorely missed daily, I know by many of you, and certainly um, coming into the office every day, it's, uh, it, there are emotional moments out of, out of nowhere, turning corners. Um, for those of you who were with us uh, last night at the awards show, um, there was a, a commemorative video that will be available online, and uh, do take a chance to, to take a look at it and, and share it. We are also thrilled uh, to have announced last night that um, moving forward, the, the three-day music camp, um, which has been called the Winter Music Camp, is going to be renamed the Lewis J. Myers Music Camp. This is the and really a way to, uh, to honor his, his legacy, his passion, and uh, as we all know, his belief that music was for, uh, for everyone, no matter what level, that it wasn't just industry, that there was the, the joy of playing music, and his vision of the, the camp as a place where uh, people of all ages, levels, and interests uh, could gather to, to learn, to share, and to simply play music. So we have, um, you know, we have a, a dream to see this uh, grow over the years and to uh, carry his legacy with it in this uh, new name and title. I'd like to um, acknowledge that the, the success of this organization uh, is due in no small part to the incredible team that we've been able to assemble. And uh, it may seem a little incongruous to have a folk music organization with an org chart and a chain of command, but uh, I just wanted to share with, with everyone um, the, the structure that, that has been built and the, the staff expansion that has been put in place to start to allocate energy, expertise, and resources into different aspects of the operations for, for the year-round organization that has really allowed all of the improvements to, to happen. Um, and that has included um, the, the hiring of uh, now a, a full seven uh, staff in our Kansas City office, two interns, and, um, and contract staff that include uh, Sheena Keane, our international representative based out of Ireland, Anna Mira, um, our Canadian representative based out of Ottawa, uh, Doug Cox, our music camp director, Lully Capwell, our publicist in LA, Jim Schultz, our private showcase coordinator, Cindy Cogville, our day program coordinator, Tara Tonser, our festival artisan and market coordinator, um, and then our, our own staff here in, in Kansas City, uh, Leah Watts, our administrative assistant, Erica Noguera, our communications manager, Alex Mallet, our business development manager, Jenny Tanyas, our creative services manager, Jared Rivers, our membership and technology manager, and Jennifer Rowe, who's our director of operations. So um, beyond that, there are obviously folks that come on board on contract basis, and we've been able to find um, an incredible team here from our graphic design and printing services to uh, production and uh, sound and, and tech here with with Sect, Epic Productions, and, uh, and many others. We have incredible volunteers as well, 250 plus uh, on the weekend here, but also folks that show up um, year round at different events that we have. So um, my, uh, my hearty thanks to everyone here and the team that makes this happen, including our board of directors. So uh, for me, thank you. Our relationship with Kansas City uh, continues to, to grow and expand and deepen. 
obviously coming in as an international organization uh, from Memphis into Kansas City with a five-year contract. Um, there was sort of the, the initial wonder and honeymoon of it all, uh, but it, in all of my uh, conversations here, you know, almost the second sentence of anyone's conversation with me was, so when are you leaving? Uh, and this, you know, wondering what the exact date was. And there's been a lot of recalibrating that conversation that we're not going anywhere. Um, we wouldn't be building a staff the way we are here, um, only to shed that staff and have to go and rebirth the office and the organization uh, somewhere else. Uh, the conference will indeed move in 2019 to, to Montreal, that's already been announced, but in terms of building the organization, the stability of the organization, and the year-round operations that, that we are um, based here, uh, and that has really uh, led to deeper relationships and partnerships inside Kansas City that included uh, the launch of Friends of uh, Folk KC, um, which included local, uh, local sponsors and, and donors coming on board uh, from the business community, the uh, cultural sector, and the philanthropic uh, community. And it's, um, it's exciting to see the, the response as, as happens in any community when someone new comes to town, that trust building and that sense of Folk Alliance having its place within the, the, uh, the cultural sector here. Um, I, I do want to share that as of, um, as of January, I uh, have uh, been invited to uh, co-chair the Arts Sector Council Advisory Committee that uh, advises to economic development here for the city, and that's representing Folk Alliance International, but, um, but as part of the cultural sector. And, and again, testament to the, the place that Folk Alliance is finding within the, uh, the truly valued cultural sector of the city, as seen in all of the um, economic development and um, city administration's appreciation of the arts. The, um, the regions of Folk Alliance, uh, five of them that have uh, all of the, the members of Folk Alliance who live within North America, um, home to one of the regions, obviously, NERFA, SURFA, the Southeast Regional Folk Alliance, SWERFA, the Southwest Regional Folk Alliance, FARM, Folk Alliance Regional Midwest, and Far West um, are all uh, organizations run by passionate volunteer boards of directors uh, with their own conferences, their, their own uh, communication and, um, and membership um, who fall under the, the Folk Alliance International membership but assigned by their uh, geographic um, location. These boards of directors operate uh, year-round to produce their own events, including some uh, uh, one-day events and uh, increasingly combined uh, events. And uh, it's, a, it's an incredibly um, diverse group of, of organizations, interests, and representation with events that range in, in size from 200 to almost 900. Um, Two years ago, we held a, a regional leaders retreat in Colorado Springs that brought together the, uh, the presidents of each of the regions with our regions committee chair, uh, a board member, and our core staff. Um, this past spring, we held a similar meeting in New Orleans, um, and we focused on professional development related to governance and uh, best practices for 501c3s and indeed, um, exciting as it is, bylaws. Um, but what it did was lead to a more consistent conversation uh, as the five regional organizations and as Folk Alliance International uh, related to best practice and consistency in, in language and uh, an execution of, of the bylaws and the governing documents that allow the organizations to function in a way that, that benefits the membership. Uh, we'll be holding our third annual retreat this March in, in Baltimore, and uh, if I could sort of summarize the experience of those retreats, I, I think what it has done is create a much more uh, sense of, of community between the, the leadership and, and Folk Alliance and a much more open conversation and, and collaborative approach to um, how we move forward in benefit of all of the membership. 
Um, our membership has uh, continued to, uh, to increase and to be refined in terms of how we track membership. Uh, one of the, the main things that we've uh, seen change this past year, um, in part because of the increased communication between our office and, and Jared Rivers, our membership manager, uh, and the regional leadership, but also with members uh, using our new um, Your Membership uh, interface, which allows all members to now have their own account, is more active use of that membership account. And at an organizational level, when a small, medium, or large organization is a member, uh, that there are the sub-accounts associated with that. And we've seen much more activity in terms of those sub-accounts being used and more members of an organization that is a member of Folk Alliance um, activating that. So whereas in the past we might have had a an admin at address that would go to uh, an organizational membership. We now have that main admin at address, but then the the additional addresses of staff or board members of folks who are actively engaged with Folk Alliance. And so we're seeing a, a deepening of communication out to the, the direct membership that's impacted. We. Um, <coughs> We continue to focus not only, obviously, the conference is uh, the the gem in the in the year in terms of what we produce, but we have uh, continued to focus our attention on advocacy, uh, and not only as it relates to to communicating and providing edu educational resources, as we uh, released two years ago with a, a white paper and a travel tip sheet, but increasingly in terms of our place. Uh, nationally and internationally related to coalition interests. So these are um, issues that are critical to the entire music sector and to the, the cultural sector, and in partnership with organizations uh, including the Recording Academy, the American League of, of Orchestras, and many others uh, stood together around key issues that have included the Music First Coalition and uh, the Performing Arts Visa Working Group. Um, most recently, uh, we also um, stood in solidarity with this same coalition um, in, uh, in, in opposition initially to the executive order of late um, and the travel ban of seven countries, uh, and then in, in support of uh, retaining uh, the rights for all of the, the artists to, um, to access the U.S. Um, when the executive order was uh, put in question by the, the federal court. So again, it's, thank you. So I mean, this is part of the charitable, um, the charitable work and the, the advocacy and outreach work that's done um, related to our mission, but related to the, the broader interests of the mu music community at large and our members specifically. Um, but I, I think you'll, you'll see both in the, the website, in, the resources section, but in our continued communication, uh, that this is increasingly um, uh, an area where as staff capacity has grown and as the resources internally have uh, have deepened, that we are able to focus our attention on things. And certainly for me, I'm less buried in you know the, the font selection of the program book for the conference and able to focus on conversations at a, at a higher level uh, with organizations and leadership um, within um, issues that are, are dear to all of us. Uh, speaking of uh, capacity and development, uh, bringing on a communications manager uh, in June of this past year, we've seen a tremendous growth in our uh, social media and communications um, uh, tracking and numbers. So just you know, looking at what what the focus of one individual as opposed to sort of spreading out all of the issues and, uh, and daily operations between a, a, a smaller pool where everyone was sort of managing things that weren't necessarily their area of expertise, but bringing on someone whose primary focus was to enhance our communications and to see more uh, consistent use of our social media platforms and to be more uh, responsive to the way that our membership and the public at large uh, were responding to uh, our, our posts and our uh, topics and releases has resulted in an astronomical um, growth and change this year. We've seen um, a steady increase in use of all of our uh, platforms and certainly in the open rates and the response rate to 
uh, our press releases and, and monthly communication. Just uh, taking a quick look back at, uh, at last year, we produced an annual report. Uh, while we have had annual reports in, in the past, they were um, summaries that were part of uh, executive director reports and, and standard communication on an annual basis to the membership. But this past year, we produced an actual uh, printed uh, annual report. We will have those at the uh, back of the room for anyone who did not receive one um, in digital format earlier this year or didn't receive a print copy uh, that you'll be able to, to pick up on your way out. And one of the things that we wanted to do was to start to tell the story of, uh, of Folk Alliance in a way that, the, that our funders and that the community at large could uh, actually see past the, the, the glory of this conference, but see how as a 501c3, as a federal charity, uh, it operated on par with other, with other charities. And part of that is being able to tell the story and be transparent. Um, about our uh, our events and our year-round operations. So this is a snapshot from that annual report that just um, shows in an infographic format uh, some of the, the lead stats from last year's conference. Uh, one of the areas of, uh, of interest and um, sort of myth was the presenter stats and comments that, well, it's, it's you know, only a certain kind of presenter that's at that's at Folk Alliance. Um, and we suspected that not to be true, and we were also focused on um, diversifying and, and uh, increasing some of those presenter segments. And you'll see from, from last year's conference, there were 339 uh, presenters, so individuals who attended, who, who self-designated as presenters, and the breakdown of those, um, those types of presenters. This is uh, one snapshot of the data but it's the sort of uh, data that we are harvesting in, in all of our work now so that we're able to make data-driven decisions and actually come back with, with figures and have conversations that are based on uh, not what we think is happening, but what we know to be happening. Um, we had 18 countries represented last year and um, 3,520 volunteer hours that went into producing the event. Uh, all of these things, you know, they, they happen as, as do many of the, the festivals and organizations that you run, but when you start to really digest the, the amount of time and resources, uh, it's, it's a considerable event that we put on. The uh, part of that annual report then is also looking at the, the financials um, and putting it into terms that, I mean, I know reading through the actual financials is not all that riveting, uh, but being able to take a, a look at the bigger picture, last year was the, um, the second year that we've crested a million dollar uh, operating year, um, meaning that we've brought in a million and spent a million. Um, and uh, both years with a, um, a small profit at the end of the year, but this was uh, once again an infographic just to simply illustrate where the money comes from and where the money goes to operate for the year. Um, and then the, um, the, the breakdown within the, the program services uh, between the conference, the music camp, the festival, um, and other. And we will continue to, to use this annual report format so that you're able to have a quick view and uh, a sense of where the organization is at on a year-to-year on a -year basis. Um, coming to outreach and, and education, again, beyond the, beyond the conference, um, we have obviously been uh, focused on connecting with the, the community at large. Uh, that has included an artist in residency program. You'll recall that, um, that two years ago, the artist in residency program uh, involved an artist com uh, collaborating with the Kansas City Ballet. Last year, we had an artist collaborate with the World War I Museum to access archives and, uh, and create a song based on letters from a, a Kansas nurse who was based in uh, World War I France. Uh, and this year we are thrilled, and Marissa, if you wouldn't mind, there we are. Um, this year we are thrilled to have two artist in residency projects which will be uh, shared with you this Friday and Saturday. One is blues musician Rita Shirelli, who is, uh, as we speak, inside the, the walls of the Topeka Women's Correctional Facility, um, launching a choir. 
Um, the, they don't even have a, a single instrument inside that, that prison, but she's there for four days uh, working with, uh, with inmates who are going to be accompanying her for a concert on Thursday. Uh, the warden is, um, has a distinct interest in seeing a choir develop long-term from this project, and uh, we'll be sharing a, a brief video in advance of Ani DeFranco's presentation on Friday related to that project. Um, if one wasn't enough, we took on another one this year and, uh, and have Making Movies, we're a, a local Latino band um, collaborating with um, KCPD homicide detective um, Chado uh, de Lavos, whose poem Brown Eyes and Blue is uh, about his experience as a Hispanic police officer um, and the, the personal and professional tension of that. So they're collaborating to create a, a soundscape um, the band themselves have gone into the Lansing Men's Correctional Facility um, to take in the environment and the experience and, and bring that to bear in their collaboration uh, around his poetry. And they'll be presenting that artistry residency project in advance of Billy Bragg's uh, presentation on, on Saturday. Um, just coming towards the, the end here, um, our theme this year of uh, Forbidden Folk was uh, something that we discussed almost a year and a half ago um, uh, in, a, in a board meeting. And it uh, eerily lands us here, considering all of the things of, of the past year, and not just here in the US and not just related to the election, uh, but, but globally, uh, from the environment to refugees to, uh, to unmentionable injustice, to indigenous issues, uh, to corporate, um, issues in terms of um, priorities and it it's a reminder that these issues they're not new they may be more grave or less grave than they were in the 60s or the 70s but but that, that it is something that requires uh, vigilance as uh, as citizens as a community and certainly as uh, the folk community and folk alliance international so that was sort of the, the motivation uh, a year and a half ago to take on this, this theme. There were, er, there were easier and safer themes, and, uh, but it, I felt it was important that we actually look back on the, the social roots, the, the connection of community that was um, part of the ethos of folk music. And it's not to say that every song has to be a protest song, but it, it is to say that there's something different from being Music Alliance International and being Folk Alliance International, and diving into what what that nature of folk is, and it's not about how we define the music, but what is that ethos, and that part of that included digging into the deeper conversations. And uh, last year was an amazing, you know, sort of euphoric year coming out of the conference, and I, I want to capture some of that same energy this year, but to do it in the way where you you know you leave a good movie. And uh, you, you know, you're with someone after a movie, but you kind of need a few minutes just to think and maybe go for a drink and sit and, and talk about what that movie was. And, and that we try and find that same place in this conference this year, that you know, coming out of this conference, that there's something new that's been triggered. There's a conversation you've had with someone that you've known for years where you think, wow, we never really had that conversation before. And, and I hope that this theme will will generate some of that um, some of that dialogue for all of us. Um, you'll see that reflected in the programming throughout, and I couldn't be prouder of the the artists who who come in. We have uh, record attendance this year with uh, almost uh, 2,700 pre-registrations at this stage. Um, our top, uh, we're at 90% of our um, hotel contract in terms of room room night bookings, uh, and we have. Uh, artists and, and delegates from over 20 countries, which is, um, which is considerable and impressive, including a thousand first-time attendees, which is really a testament to the, the credibility and the profile of the organization. And we're, we're absolutely seeing an increased interest um, internationally as, uh, as Folk Alliance International um, commits to its title, but also commits to its role as the international voice and voice face and uh, and flag bearer for the folk music community. Um, the the music camp, uh, which 
moving forward will be the Louis J. Myers Music Camp. I just want to remind everyone, it takes place Friday through Sunday. Uh, based on your feedback last year from the post-conference surveys um, and the reality that there's so much to do within the conference that many people couldn't take the time to get over, we shifted it to spend the weekend allowing Sunday access to, to those camp classes. Um, it's, it's a considerable endeavor to take on that camp. It's a considerable cost as well. So we introduced a, a $10 uh, fee per class uh, for our, our delegates, and, uh, and we have uh, up almost uh, 240 delegates who have signed up to take classes uh, and increased public participation. Obviously, there are day and, and three day passes for the public. Uh, again, these are uh, artists from, um, from all over North America, all levels of, of instruction, uh, from master classes to, um, to introductory sessions and, um, and all instruments. Um, once again, my, my thanks to Doug Cox for coordinating all of our program this year for that camp. It's, uh, it's an incredible lineup. Do take some time to get over there and, and see what's happening. All the information is in the program, which is um, on 100% recycled paper and soy-based ink. Uh, part of the reading initiative of Folk Alliance this year and, and the camp. Uh, you'll see staffed recycling stations throughout. I do want to celebrate that the um, that the hotel uh, embraced our environmental impact approach to the conference this year and a year ahead of their corporate schedule have introduced uh, year-round full composting here in the hotel uh, which is uh, no small feat in the Midwest. and finally uh, i'd just like to um, share with you, uh, obviously, last year we launched our first annual Kansas City Folk Festival on the Sunday of the conference. This is our second annual Kansas City Folk Festival. Um, we, uh, taking into consideration response from uh, the attendees of two years ago uh, when we were running the music fair and the conference at the same time, we sort of reoriented that public-facing portion to be a one-day event after the conference. Uh, so taking place on the same ballroom floor in all of the same rooms, uh, but in a public facing format, the exhibit hall turns into an artisan's market with jewelers, painters, potters, uh, and the public are welcome in. We have a, a family stage this year, Grammy award winning um, Okie Dokie Brothers will be here, um, Bobby Rush, Billy Bragg's um, one official performance will be uh, closing out the festival. And all of this is designed to create a more uh, public access point for Kansas City at large. And the intent being that when the conference um, migrates to Montreal in 2019, that we, uh, that we take the Kansas City Folk Festival from this hotel environment out into an outdoor setting, warmer time of year, uh, and that we plant roots uh, with the, the festival um, within this community, uh, regardless of where the, the conference uh, ends up in, in future years. Uh, one celebratory um, item from this past year, uh, a video that was shot here uh, two conferences ago, kind of on a wing and a prayer, uh, called, uh, and was a behind the scenes view of, of what happens at Folk Alliance as a way to sort of uh, introduce new people to the concept because it's impossible to explain until people have been here. Um, that video uh, received uh, two awards uh, this year, the, the Philly Awards, which are um, awards for excellence in nonprofit marketing here in Kansas City. And uh, so we received uh, the award for uh, best short film, but also an award of distinction for highest ranking. And this is a, a photo of uh, some of the staff, Jared, Erica, Alex, Jen, and Jenny. Um, at that awards ceremony. And then I just, yes, I close out quickly with our, our image for uh, next year's 30th anniversary conference. This is um, created by Michael Rycraft and is uh, sort of a call back to the, uh, the ancestral fire, if you will, uh, the, uh, the the place where it, where it all began in terms of gathering people. Um, <clears throat> so in 1989 in Malibu, when um, Clark and Elaine Weissman um, first invited folks in and that uh, first small gathering uh, assembled 
and many conversations that I had with, with folks over the past two years, I mean, some had dreams that it would be exactly this, and, and others had no idea that it would be this. But uh, we're looking forward to celebrating the past 30 years of Folk Alliance International, um, the story of where it began and, and, and all of the things that have happened in the interim, but also the, the past 30 years of, of folk music. Uh, so it will be a homecoming uh, of sorts and, and a real celebratory year. We're really looking forward to it as, as staff and board. And, um, and beyond that, um, the, the future is bright. Um, do read those constitutions and uh, do read your own Folk Alliance International bylaws. Uh, they are the governing documents that, that we operate under and, and take time to look through the website and the resources. Uh, there's a lot more that happens behind the scenes and year round than, than, than might be apparent during the conference. It is my honor uh, to, to serve you as executive director and once again, my deep thanks to this incredibly passionate and articulate board of directors. Um, they are the stewards of this organization and um, you are in good hands with, with them. And my thanks to you as the, the membership for being who you are and doing what you do back on the, the roads and in the towns that, uh, that you're from. Thank you. Thank you, Angus. And now from our outgoing treasurer, the moment you've been all waiting for, the financial report. <laughs> I don't know what Angus was talking about. I think financial reports are sexy. Uh, <laughs> There's that. Okay. Um, this is my final report as treasurer. I uh, want to thank Alka for uh, uh, deposing me after nine years of doing this. Um, honored and glad to serve, but nine years is certainly enough. Um, I do want to take a moment to thank everyone um, who made it really easy for me to do my job. Uh, past presidents Dan Navarro, who's right here, Renee Bodie, who will be joining us later, uh, Dave Hirschland. Of course, now just past President Michelle Conceison, who's made herself very comfortable over there. I'm somewhat jealous. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and of course, our incoming and new president, uh, uh, Matt Smith. Also, our past executive director, Louis J. Myers, our current ED, Angus, our operations director, Jennifer Rowe, and of course, all the current and former board members that I've been able to serve with. <clears throat> I'm very pleased to report again to the membership that our finances are strong through the careful diligence of our executive director and the general oversight and financial prudence of this board, we had just over $606,000 in liquid assets at the end of 2016, and that does not include another almost $170,000 in accounts receivable and prepaid expenses against current liabilities of just under $27,000. That's a good number. Let me just put that into perspective. You know, when I gave my first treasurer's report in 2009 back in Memphis, we had just $150,000 in liquid assets, which was at that time, the first year in many, that we had been debt free. So 2016, we've got uh, you know, almost $800,000, and uh, you know, only nine years ago, uh, just 150, dollars and a year or two before that, frankly, the balance sheet was insolvent. We again received an unqualified audit for our last fiscal year. Uh, once again, for those of you who are not familiar with audit lingo, that's actually a good thing. Unqualified means that, that it doesn't mean that it didn't qualify. It means that there were no qualifications. There were no exceptions or, or, or issues that the auditor found with us. So um, it really uh, means with no qualifications or reservations to the audit, we, uh, we pass muster, we're in sound health. Again, we continue to be debt free. Now that's uh, 108 months. Without debt, um, it represents, again, the commitment to financial prudence that this board and Angus have um, as we live up to our uh, responsibility as stewards of our mission and you, the members' money. These accomplishments position us very well to continue to prosper as the nation benefits from solid, though admittedly still somewhat uncertain, economic growth. Uh, this fourth conference in Kansas City, as you heard from Angus, is proving to be, yet again, another uh, show topper from the prior year. That's a four-year run of constant growth out here, um, both from a mission and financial perspective. I mean, I know I'm here to give the financial report, but what has really impressed me about our growth over the last few years is as our finances have gotten better, so too has our delivery mission, and that's really, really important. Uh, 
With this, um, <clears throat> excuse me, with, uh, so we are in a secure position as we continue to build our presence here in Kansas City. You heard some more about that from Angus. Um, this also, this financial strength has positioned us to take risks in extending the mission, expanding our mission, our outreach, and our program, as well as preparing us for 2019 in Montreal, and sometime, uh, hopefully in the first half of this year, uh, we'll make a decision on exactly what we're gonna do in 2020 and beyond. Um, we enter this process with great confidence our leadership team, and so I'm honored to announce to you that the board approved and Angus has accepted a three-year extension, so he stuck with us at least through June of 2020. Towards the rest of 2017, uh, we expect financial conditions to be stable, though it's impossible to predict exactly what shocks might come to the economy. I can predict one or two, but hopefully that won't happen. Uh, your board and staff continue to focus on what's necessary to protect and even improve our financial condition. Uh, so I'm looking forward to a great rest of the conference and even a better rest of the year. Thank you very much, and I'll turn it back over to Matt. Thank you, Donna. Um, right now we'd like to open it up for any questions or comments from anyone here if you have any questions and also please note that any of the board members here all the board members here have a pin on their uh, badges that say ask me and you're allowed to do that at any point throughout the conference come and ask us and we will direct you to a different board member to ask uh, but if, uh, is, are there any are there any questions or comments uh, from the floor right now Oh, yes, please, please, come on, Archon. Please welcome John Platt. Thank you, ma'am. Um, Biff Kennedy from Philadelphia, Rich Warren from Chicago, and I have been uh, working on a way of honoring Gene Shea, who is certainly the dean of folk DJs for so, so many years, and who's doing better in Philadelphia, although he's been in somewhat declining health the last couple of years and isn't able to attend uh, Folk Alliance anymore. So um, we came up with this idea for a Gene Shea Folk DJ Scholarship, which would be to uh, bring a first-timer, somewhat rookie folk DJ to the Folk Alliance to become part of this community and be able to take advantage of all that uh, this conference and this community offers. Um, so uh, we sort of have this uh, quick idea that the people would submit a 50-word bio, a description of the station and the program, why they want to attend and hope to accomplish. Uh, we we're asking for terrestrial broadcasters, with all due respect to Mary Sue, uh, and uh, have a, a, a maximum of one year, a minimum of five years experience, and not having attended a Folk Alliance as a DJ prior to 2018. Uh, we'll use the website, the Folk Alliance website, for them to submit materials and there's be a judging by a, a, a committee of folk DJs and one industry representative to kind of screen this, uh, to try and make it as inclusive as we can. And what it will enable these people to do is to have a full registration for Folk Alliance 2018 with $500 travel paid, which could be applied either to ground transportation or air travel, four nights of hotel paid and $100 in expenses. So that really makes it possible for people who wouldn't be able to come otherwise uh, to step forward and, and uh, become better known and become better versed in what we're doing. I thank Angus for his great support in uh, helping to make this possible, as well as some other major funders, including the folks at NERFA, who uh, are certainly well aware of what Gene has represented to the folk community, and WXPN, where uh, Gene worked for so many years, uh, Rich Warren, uh, Taylor Caffrey, and of course, Folk Alliance International as well. Uh, you know, we sometimes worry in this community that, uh, you know, we're all becoming senior citizens, or as we say in New York, Alta Cockers. And, uh, you know, this is, I think, one way to bring some young blood forward and, and for us to be able to take advantage of those fresh ideas. So I just wanted to bring you up to date on that. And next year, we'll hope we have somebody here for the first time who will be able to uh, share with us this wonderful experience. Um, having there having, uh, been no, no questions or comments, uh, at this being an official... <laughs> to, 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 oh, 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 yes, please. First, uh, Juliana, Montreal. Uh, first thing I want to say, I would, I would, would like to give an incredible hand to 
just for a minute with what you've done because it's part of it. Before coming here to yesterday, in the, one of the best newspaper of Montreal, there was there's a great article about Folk Alliance. And it means that people from Montreal now know that, that you're going to be there in two years. <laughs> and when I, when I saw the Forbidden Folk thematic, I called Angus. And I said to Angus, hey, you know Angus, uh, I'm an artistic director for 25 years. But first of all, I was a a musician, a union strike organizer, and I was singing on the picket line for so many years. And uh, I wanted to sing a, a social song here at Folk Alliance in French that you can understand that we, we also have our fights and looking for our rights. Mon père nous raconte souvent Le combat des hommes de son temps, trop sont morts dans la poussière, une longue vie d'affrontement. On pense à vendre la santé, comme bien d'autres faut arriver. La colère guidera mes bras contre leurs profits et leurs lois. Dans tout le pays, j'entends mes frères chants de douleur et chants de guerre. J'entends crier mes sœurs aussi. Assez gaspiller nos vies, mais chaque fois qu'un de nous se lève, notre ennemi recule d'un pas. Trouvons nos chefs, trouvons nos forces, et enfin on l'achèvera. Assez de vie comme des esclaves, l'histoire s'écrit dans le combat. Demain nous tournerons la page, l'histoire commence dès maintenant. Questions, comments? I have one. Um, is that uh, you could actually call all the regions farm. They could all be folk alliance regional meetings. And and if since they all have other cuter things, we don't need to be farming. We shouldn't be, because there is no real Midwest. Uh, we are in the center of the United States, Grand McNally maps. Us the central uh, U.S. Um, and if you decide we've got a Midwest, then where's the eastern part of it? Is that which states are those? And then where does the west? Where does the west part of the Midwest? West. <coughs> I know it's a historical thing, but uh, anything that was east of the coast was west. Um, but it's time to give it up. It really is. And I don't like, I wouldn't want to say I'm from the Midwest. I'd much rather say I'm from more specific or I'm from the, the central part of the US. <coughs> That's it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it, 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 is, it is entirely up to the regions. I mean, the, uh, Mary Sue, did you want to say anything? I don't want to put you on the spot like that. <laughs> I was going to say, just, just one thing to be clear. The regions, and, and thank you for that comment. It's really important to hear perspective like that. Um, one of the interesting things about the way Folk Alliance is organized is that the regions are independent organizations. So while it may appear that we're the parent you know, organization um, and somehow control, that's actually not the uh, the real situation. So I would very much encourage you to bring that up with the board of, of Farm. Uh, they are completely empowered to make those decisions. And in fact, I'm sure uh, Mary Sue, who's our, uh, our regional uh, regions committee chair uh, person, will certainly bring that up with them as well. Would you like to add anything? Donald, you nailed it. <laughs> Anyone else? I just wanted to thank uh, David Newland, uh, Coburg, Ontario, Canada. I just wanted to thank Folk Alliance uh, both for the for the very visible increase in advocacy and for the communications that surround that uh, at 
this time. I think many of us, especially north of the border, have felt uh, at times it's really easy to feel that we don't know how to respond to the issues of our time as anything other than individuals. To be able to feel a part of a community that is responding in a vibrant and a vital way is incredibly empowering. Uh, to that point, I know there are artists north of the border right now who did not come here because of the climate that has been generated. And I think that the work we're doing here uh, to reflect a positive and a hopeful alternative to that is going to have ripple effects literally around the world, especially amplified by communication. So just a hats off to the advocacy and to the communication that this organization has been doing and to the increasing diversity that is all of our responsibility. Thank you. Yeah. I just wanted a little perspective. I was involved with this from the very beginning. From I wasn't involved with it until I started coming in 1990. Uh, and having been an early board member, watching the change and what's happened in terms of the board and the staff, that we couldn't even dream that the conference could ever get to this level be this kind of organization. And uh, for years I've been more involved in a lot of ways with the performing arts conferences, with the national and all the regional ones, and watching this get to that level and in some ways you see what all the other conferences are doing. It's just so gratifying. So we be part of it. Thank you all. Thank you. Mike. Well, there is, uh, we're going to have the event on Friday out, out in, uh, up right over there, right, 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 right upstairs on the deck. Um, are there any other year-round plans that are going to be happening here at KC? Nothing right now. But that's, uh, as, that's as, as Folk Alliance International, as the organization, uh, but you guys, you are all voices, and you are all, uh, and your voices are going to be what opens doors and tears down walls and or stops walls from being built. So, you know, that's... <laughs> Anyone else? Hey, wasn't it more fun in 2007 when you had 150 angry members lined up to... Uh, <laughs>
world view as they go forward in the world as young artists. Thank you. We do have one. We do have one presentation. So by, by, by now, um, by, by now a very good friend of mine is either afraid that I'm actually going to try to play guitar on stage, <laughs> or is starting to figure something out. Um, I, I want to take a moment um, to recognize. I mean, we, we thank all of our board alums and all of our uh, all of our former board members, um, but I want to take a moment on behalf of the entire board um, to give extra special thanks to a very unique individual um, who probably, second only to Louis J. Myers, is the reason that we survived uh, 2006 and 2007 to uh, Art's articulate point. Um, he served on the board for 11 years, four of those as president, uh, through some very difficult times. Um, he snookered me into being treasurer for two years that was nine years ago. He asked me, I, I was very busy at the time, and he asked me if I would serve, and I called up my wife, and I said, I've got uh, good news and bad news. Um, the bad news is I'm seeing somebody, the good news is it's Dan Navarro. And she, said, and she said, what do you mean? And I said, well, he's asked me to serve as treasurer. And she went, oh, and what did you say? <laughs> And I know I was in trouble. I said, well, you know, and you got to understand, to, to my kids, um, Dan is Uncle Dan to my two children. Um, they, they've grown up, fans of Lowen and Navarro, and then Dan Navarro. Um, been on many of the 17 or 16 cruises that I've done with him. Uh, I responded, well, you know, I mean, you got to understand, I mean, Dan asked me, and he's going to spend 10 times as much time as I'm going to spend. And at that point, I knew I was going to be safe, because she said, well, it's not that I don't understand your predicament. So uh, that's how I got out of trouble with that. That's how I got onto the board. Uh, again, I mean, there's just not words enough for everything he's done. Uh, brought, brought governance, brought professionalism, recruited board members, so many, so many things. Um, been an absolute pain in the ass as well, but you know, we all love him for that. Um, I think, what's, what's your favorite saying, Dan? Why, why say in few words what can be said in many? Why use few words when many will do? There you go, why use few words when many will do? So I've already used enough words, so I'm going to uh, call Dan up to the stage for a moment, and um, we are presenting him with a special gift. He, he knows what to do with this, I should know. El perro, el perro, es mi corazón. El gato, el gato, el gato no es bueno. Cilantro es cantante, cilantro es muy famoso. Cilantro es el hombre con el queso del diablo. This is sad thing. He was paid for that. He made some serious money on that. This uh, little ditty I sang in the series at uh, American Dad about seven years ago. I am blown away. First of all, you guys, thank you and oh Lord. Stepping away from this board is one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. But there is a time when it's time to walk away. When it's time to um, allow others the opportunity to serve, and in particular to lead. Um, leadership is not easy, and everybody on this board knows that and has picked up that mantle with vigor and um, a certain amount of trepidation. This was a vastly different place when I got here, and I'm not saying it was horrible and we made it great. It was great and we were in trouble. And now we've made it great, turn, with less trouble, pretty much no trouble. This is a collegial board, it's an amazing organization. I've said on numerous occasions, I came to Folk Alliance for one reason, I came looking for work. And I found a community, and I found a reason to keep coming back when I speak to people in my community who don't know quite what this is or come occasionally uh, and try to get across to them that if you come here once a year, you become national and you become connected and you become part of a family that looks out for one another even as we disagree and has their eyes on the horizon and just as well focused on the ground beneath their feet. I love this organization, I love all these people on this board, I love the people that had served on the board, even some with whom I butted heads, and there were a few. 
and it was a difficult time. Those times are gone. We remember them and we honor them. But the times we have right now are the most exciting I can imagine. This organization hitting its stride, our mission in sync with the rest of the world, and music becoming as important, and folk culture, and in particular, what we do better than anybody, better than the other organizations, some of which I'm a member, and some of which I'm not. And I share that with many people on this board. We connect, and we tell stories. As long as we can continue to do that, we're gonna grow, we're gonna flourish, and we're all gonna look at each other at much riper old ages and go, yeah. <laughs> you guys, Angus Finnan. Angus and I got to know each other when we toured together 11 years ago. About two years later, I was president of the Folk Alliance Board, and he was president of the then OCFF Board, and we looked at each other as artists with these institutional positions going, did it? <laughs> and now here he is, dressed impeccably, impeccably better than I ever could. Yeah, he's like 47 years younger than me, but there's that. Thank you from the bottom of my heart to all of you, but to all of you guys, um, I, I miss you already. I've been off the board for about 10 hours. <laughs> No, no, more like 20 minutes, something like that. But thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. I love you all, and um, I look forward to seeing you all out there bleary eyed. Thank you. Uh, next year, Dan has been working on a. Uh, a musical based on our bylaws. And he's going to present that next year in the official showcase. Um, and, <laughs> as we need to uh, move our board meeting upstairs, uh, we are going to uh, put to the membership, uh, entertain a motion to adjourn this 2017 AGM. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Do we have a second? The motion passes. Uh, Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we appreciate your time coming down to this. Thank you for, for, for being the heart and soul of this organization. And ask us. <laughs> <laughs>